have this vivid memory of sitting in the bathtub one time and just crying. I think I punched my dad once. You're not in charge of me right now. Like, you just won't leave me alone. I had an epidural on my back, so I couldn't move very well. She just wanted me to keep pushing and keep going. Everybody had one. Like, if you didn't have one, you were looked down upon. This is a show where teenagers share their experiences growing up in today's world. I'm your host, Dr. RJ, and this is A Teen's Perspective. Raise your hand if you put an A and you want to chat with me. All right, Walter, I'm coming to you. My was pretty good. All right, all right. It's good. Now, you what did. is making life so great? I have a lot of stuff under control. Like, we're in the middle of a move, so we're handling that pretty well. I'm not having too much trouble with that. School is, like, all right how it usually is. I've been positive recently. All right, come on, guys. Let's give Walter a hand for that. Walter, a hand. So, as I'm sharing things with you guys... I'm always going to give you tips in life, okay? Always. I mean, I'm a life coach. Of course, I have to do that. But for you guys who are new, I just want to tell you really quickly what life coaching is all about. So I'm a life coach. What I do for a living is help people get what they want. That's literally what I do. Most of the celebrities have life coaches. Presidents have life coaches. Any successful business person, they have a life coach, for sure. Because life coaching, what we can do is we have strategies and tips that help open your mind in a sense. Because right now, everyone is living their life and you're like this, everybody, even me, right? I have a life coach because you need someone to help remove this and like expand your view because then you can accomplish more things. So that's what I do for a living. So you're going to always hear me give you some life tips. And before we talk about what I had planned to talk to you guys about, I want to give you a quick life tip. So you're going to write it down if you have a pen and paper. I don't want you guys to get this confused. So life coaching is not giving you advice. You know, if I'm talking to Georgia, like I can't necessarily give her advice because first of all, I'm not her age. I'm not a girl. I'm not in her house. I don't have her friends. Like I can't technically give her advice. Now I can share with her success that I've witnessed in other teenagers. So it's like, hey, I've coached thousands of teenagers over the past seven years. So yes, I can share with her, hey, this worked with this person, but technically I can't give her advice, right? But what I can do, is unlock her mind so that she can make a better decision or that she can start to see opportunities that she didn't know existed. And that's where I really shine. You know, I've helped cheerleaders make varsity. I know nothing about cheerleading, but I understand that we all have these mental blocks. And if I can help you remove the mental block, then you're going to get success. Now, if you have your pen ready, I did say I was going to give you a life tip based on what Walter just shared. So here's a life tip for you. And I think it's something really cool about life. As you know, I like love life. Like, I think life is amazing. I see life probably different than the average person. Like, I see life as like an amazing experience, even though there's pain, there's reason for pain. But I see life bigger than, I guess, what you would just normally experience because there's so many cool things about life. I personally believe that life is fair. Even though we see all types of crazy stuff, I don't ever subscribe to the idea that life is unfair because there's so many cool things. And I'm gonna share one with you right now. Here's a secret to happiness in a sense. You ready for it? It's a secret to happiness. Progress. I don't care what you're doing. It's something you can't control. It's natural. If you're making any progress, I don't care what it is, you're going to naturally feel good. Naturally. You can't help it. So there's no difference than if you have a to-do list and you check things off your to-do list. You just feel good about it, like a weight being lifted off the shoulder. It's natural. When you're making progress, you feel good. And it's also the other way around. When you're not making progress, you don't feel good. So this is no different than Walter. He said they're moving. And he's starting to feel good about it. He said, hey, we're getting things moving. Everything's organized. He feels better. It's just natural. So some of you guys avoid the easy ways to make progress, which is like doing chores, right? So your parents are like, hey, wash your dishes. I don't want to wash your dishes. Man, you're missing out on the opportunity to experience some progress. It's small, but it's still something that's good for you, right? So anytime you're making progress, whether it's in school, a sport, anything, it brings natural, positive feelings. So there's a little tip I want to share with you. So what I do want to talk to you guys about, first of all, raise your hand if you want people to like you. Just be honest. Come on now, because I know some people are going to be like, oh, I'm too cool for that. I don't care if anyone likes me. Raise your hand if you want to be honest. You want people to like you. All right. So thank you for being honest. Literally everyone in this world, 
you want others to like you. It's just what we do naturally. Now, I will tell you that it's actually a need. It's an emotional need. It's not a physical need, right? It's not food and water, but it's an emotional need. We need to have some acceptance. That's why you see people do certain things because they want acceptance, right? Now, what I want to talk to you today is how do you get people to like you? If you think this is a cool topic to talk about, you're excited about this topic, give me a high five. Let me see how many people are excited about this topic today. Okay, I see some excitement. Okay, cool. I think this is a good topic to talk about. Is it okay if people do not like you? So I'm gonna get to that. What we're gonna talk about is that we naturally want people to like us. All right, we all agree on that. Now, does that mean that every single person in this entire world must like us? Does that mean that? Thumbs up, yes. Thumbs down, no. No. No, it doesn't. Now, it's funny that's the case because we know it's actually impossible. And I don't say too many things are impossible, but it's very, very difficult for every single person in the entire world to like you. Yet, we always treat ourselves as if that's what we want. Think about it. How many times you guys are like automatically judging yourself or not doing something because you think people you know, are judging you? right? Like we do it all the time. It's like, oh, I don't want to do this because I think people are going to laugh at me. The fact of the matter is this, none of us can read minds. So technically you don't know if someone likes you or not. I'm just going to put it out there. Now there's some signs that you can like, okay, my parents, yeah, they, you know, they birthed me. So they probably like me and they love me, all that. I have some friends who are like, we're so close. I can tell they like me. But for the most part, You won't really know. When you first meet someone, you have no clue. They can smile at you and be like, oh, you're so awesome. But in their mind, thinking like, man, you're weird, right? We just don't know. And who cares? Actually, we don't care. But I do understand that we want people to like us. So I'm going to give you guys tips on how to make that happen. Now, another thing I have to say, we already made this clear. I'm going to teach you how to get people to like you, but it doesn't mean that everyone must like you. Okay, so let's make that clear now. Number two, it also doesn't mean that we have to do something that we feel is unethical or is not moral or something against our beliefs. It doesn't mean that at all. So I'm going to teach you basic principles, how to get people to like you, but it doesn't mean I want you to like go follow the crowd just so they'll like you. Okay. So I don't want you to get my tips twisted. Okay. So if you're ready for this, raise the roof. If you're ready for this information, raise the roof. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see who's all active. Now, why do we do all this? Like, why do I get you guys to start moving and doing all that? Why do I do this? Well, I'm going to tell you a quick little secret. So this is another life tip you might want to write down. Anytime you want to learn something, I don't care what it is. It could be martial arts. It could be a sport. It could be singing. It could be school learning, you know, school. There's a couple things you want to do so that you can learn it. First, you want to take notes. Your brain retains information better if you write down something. Take notes, even if you never read the notes again. So that's number one. Number two, whenever you're learning something and you put your whole body into it, your brain remembers it. Because remember, there's a mind-body connection. If you're just sitting there like this, and then you think that you're learning with your mind, not happening. You're learning only a little bit. But if you can like get engaged and move your body, raise your hand when the teacher's asking questions, you know, write something down, like get involved with your body, you remember more information. All right, somebody asked a question. This is actually a good question. So this person say, hey, RJ, in all respectfulness, I like how you kind of put that in there. I want to be respectful, but I don't want to ask you this question. You're 6'5". I love basketball, that I do. Why didn't you join the NBA? You're a failure. No, you didn't say that. If the whole thing is about reaching your goal, Why didn't you join the NBA? So I'm going to share with you. I did not join the NBA or pursue the NBA is because it was never my goal. Ah, see, just because I'm 6'5 and I like basketball, it doesn't mean it was my goal. Now, had I had a life coach back in high school, it may have been my goal. But I grew up in a very, very small town, Orange, Texas, very small. And we played basketball for fun right? Like we didn't really get serious about it. We didn't train. I hated practice. We just played for fun. It was a small school. Our school wasn't that great. So it never actually crossed my mind to become an NBA player. As a child, it never crossed my mind. As a middle schooler and a high schooler in college, it never crossed my mind to make it to the NBA. Now I enjoy the sport itself. I love playing basketball. I love watching it, but I never thought to do it. It wasn't my goal. In fact, my goal in high school was to make good money when, you know, whatever career I pick, I need to make good money. I wanted some freedom, so I do want freedom, and I wanted to work for myself. So those are actually my big three goals in high school, and I accomplished all of them. So, no, it was a great question. So get ready, write down 
I'm gonna give you tip number one to get people to like you. Here we go. Number one, you have to smile. You have to smile, man. I'm just saying, you have to smile. And I'm not saying this because I'm an orthodontist. You have to smile. I'm just telling you, it works. You have to smile. If you want people to like you, then guess what? You need to smile. Why do you need to smile? Well, number one, most people do not have a life coach. Okay? I'm just telling you right now, most people don't have a life coach. If your friends or your peers do not have life coaches, then they are going to get intimidated by someone who's not smiling. It's like, hey, they see Sophia. And they're like, man, she's so nice. I just want to be her friend. Ooh, but I don't know how to approach her, right? Is it easier to approach someone when you're like smiling, happy, or you're like this? Just think about it. Is it easier to approach? So it's easier to approach someone when you're smiling, number one. Number two, smiling makes you look more attractive. It just does. I don't care if your teeth are like crisscrossed in different ways. It looks so much better than doing this trying to grin. You see little pictures, people with crooked teeth. They don't want to show their teeth, so they grin. No, it looks so much better if you just smile, okay? Smiling comes off as if you're friendly. You're easy to approach. It literally brightens your face. A smile literally brightens your face. You just like to have this glow when you smile. Now, some of you do not smile often, okay? Some of you are not smiling often on purpose. Others of you, it's just like your habit. So I want to teach you guys something about your habits and your personality. Raise your hand if you believe you are your personality. Raise your hand. All right, I see a few hands up, a few hands up. Okay, okay, I see a few hands up. All right, so I'm going to tell you the answer to this. You're not. (laughs) You're not your personality because I will tell you this much. Your personality will change. (laughs) In fact, I encourage it to change. Not that you're a bad person, but As you grow and as you be around more people, you're going to notice certain qualities that you want to pick up for yourself. I do it all the time, especially when I was younger. All right. So you're not your personality. So that means if you are the type of person who's generally low energy, just the way you're born, right? You're born just lower energy is fine. You're just kind of like, oh, I'm just chilling. I'm not the active type. I'm just chilling. All I want to share with you is that you don't have to be that way if you don't want to. If you want to, you can stay that way. Of course, nothing wrong with it. But I'm saying you don't have to be that way. I'm sharing this with you as like unlocking freedom for yourself. I'm giving you freedom. You can be whoever you want to be. You do not have to be who you're naturally are in a sense. And I say naturally. So let me explain this. Your personality is nothing more than your tendency. Okay, it's a tendency. So I have a tendency to watch basketball over soccer. All right, that's my tendency. It's just a tendency. It's not who I am. It's just my tendency. Now, say I want to change that, which I will change because my son likes soccer, right? So now I'm learning soccer and I'm starting to appreciate soccer. So just because I have a tendency here doesn't mean I can't change my tendency. So if you're naturally low energy and you don't talk, you don't have to be that way. If you're like super social butterfly and you don't want to be that way, you don't have to be that way anyway. You can always change that. So number one, you need to smile. Whether it's easy for you, whether it's hard for you, do it. Now, if it is hard for you, guess what makes it easier? Practicing. Thank you, Sky. Sky just did it. Just practice. So everyone with me together. Let's do this. Please help me out here. On the count of three. I just want to see these beautiful smiles. On the count of three, we're all going to smile. All right. One, two, three. Let me see it. All right, all right. I'm seeing some nice smile. Come on, Nathan. Don't leave us hanging. Come on, man. I need to see a smile. There we go. That's a smile. Okay, okay. Pete Pearson, I see you, Jalen. So that is what I want you guys to practice. Smile. The more you practice, the more you're going to have a habit of it. All right? So that's step number one, smile. Now, the step number two, smile in your conversations. Once again, it's going to take practice, okay? So when you're talking, you could be like this. Yeah, you know, school's boring. I don't know. I don't care about it. Now, you will have other people who connect with you because they're the same way. But the topic of today is how to get people to like you. You want a lot of people to like you. This is how you do it. You need to smile and you need to smile in conversations. So those are things I want you to practice. Smiling in general. If you're by yourself and you're like eating or something, you're chewing, smile. I'm telling you, it's so much easier for someone to approach you. Some of you guys want friends. Smile. Now, let's be honest. Some of us have a resting, mean face, okay? A resting, mean face. We're not going to use the other word. Now, some of us have the, will have this face. 
I don't think I have it. You know, I think what I'm kind of, you tell me if I have it. Thumbs up if you think I have it. I don't think I have it, man. So I'm going to just be like normal and not smile at all. Here we go. This is my normal resting face. So what you think? Thumbs up if I have a resting me face. Thumbs down if I don't. I don't think I do, man. Okay, good. Everybody saying thumbs up. Good. Now, some of us do have that. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Zion. Come on, give me a high five, Zion. Say, hey, RJ, you have a nice face. I appreciate that. I like compliments. So some of us, we have these faces. Okay. Let's be honest. We do. I'm going to kind of like go to the right real quick. I was sharing this with some guidance counselors. So I was doing a training on Friday with guidance counselors. Now, if you're a guidance counselor, raise the roof if you like your guidance counselor. All right, let me see how many of you. Okay, a couple of you guys like them. All right, so we were do, I was doing this training with them. And what I was encouraging them to do or not do is automatically take a child and just ship them off to therapy. So I was trying to educate them on life coaching. Life coaching is not therapy. And the reason I'm encouraging them to do this, not because therapy doesn't work. You know, I think therapy is wonderful for 3% of the population. But the reason why I want to share this with them is because therapy does have the tendency to label you. Okay. So if you've been labeled, you know what I mean? So when I say labeled autistic, Asperger's, dyslexic, ADHD, ADD, they label you, you suffer from anxiety, you suffer from depression. Life coaches, we don't label, right? Because we know that the damaging outcome of having a label. So if you have a label, I want you to take that label and just toss it and throw it away. What we call everything in life, we call them obstacles, Every one of us will have an obstacle. So it's not that you're dyslexic, forget the label. You just have an obstacle. It's not that you have ADHD, forget all that. You have an obstacle. We all have obstacles. In fact, I'm gonna tell you one of my obstacles you know, that I'm still working on. And I'm gonna teach you guys this when we have time. I know we do, we have a little bit more time. I'm gonna teach you, part of getting people to like you is this term called modeling. I'm gonna get to it, not right now. But the point is, you wanna model someone. In other words, if I'm talking to, let's say, Jackson, And Jackson is like more kind of the quiet type. He's kind of chilled, you know, not really energetic. Then if I want Jackson to like me, I can't come in the way I naturally am. I can't come in like, hey, Jackson, what's up, man? High five. Because it's going to turn him off. So part of modeling is I have to match his kind of energy or match what he's doing. So part of my obstacle is I'm always like turned up constantly. Like I have like energy constantly. Everyone thinks I drink coffee. I don't. It's just natural, just part of me. So I have to like try to be calm whenever I'm like coaching someone who's not like energetic. Okay. That is an obstacle. So it's an obstacle because it can hinder my success. So ADHD, yes, it can hinder your success, but it's an obstacle. It's not who you are. And what my job as a life coach is I help you overcome obstacles. Okay. So I just want to kind of put that out there for you guys. Now that we brought up modeling, because this is actually a big part of getting people to like you, we call it modeling, but ultimately, if I had to simplify it, is you want to copy them. Let me explain this before you be like, wait, what? All right, you want to copy someone, okay? You want to copy them. So say, for instance, you're talking with someone, you want them to like you. You literally want to mimic them, okay? So I'm going to teach you some of these things, but before I teach you this, I need you to put your hand, right hand up. Everybody put your right hand up. We don't have a Bible, so you have to just put your right hand up. Right hand, not left, right hand. You have to promise that you will not use this information I'm sharing you to do harm, okay? We're not going to use this to manipulate anyone or do anything like that. This is strictly for you to become more likable, okay? Are we all on the same page? So this is what you do. First, let's focus on their expressions, their body expressions, facial expressions. You want to mimic them. It takes practice because you don't want to be weird, okay? You don't want to, like, make it obvious that's what you're doing. So Pearson, right now, he's doing this. So if I'm talking to Pearson, I'm going to talk to Pearson the way he is. Like, right now, he's leaning over, and this is how I'm going to talk to him, right? Now, what's even more important, I'm going to do it on the same side as him so I can mirror him, right? So he's right now doing like this, so I'm going to do on the same side. You get this? Now, If someone is looking at you, you know, some people are great at eye contact. If someone is looking at you, you want to look at them. If they are talking and they look off a lot, look off with them, okay? Because it's weird. I'm going to tell you guys, you don't want to be like this person, like somebody else is talking like this. Yeah, man, I went to the store yesterday and you don't want to be this person. I mean, you just don't want to do that, right? You want to mimic them. So if they're like, oh yeah, I'm going here. I'm like, oh yeah, for real. You know, you want to like do exactly what they're doing. Now, this is something that's actually used in sales all the time. They're mimicking. 
So I want you guys to practice mimicking. For now, practice it on your sibling, okay? Or your mom or your dad. You know, you want to practice before you go out into, you know, strangers, all right? So practice this. You follow everything they're doing. So if Pearson is here, yeah, RJ, I'm going here. And then he does this. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do just like he's doing. Yep, yep. So you want to mimic their facial expressions and their body movements. So that's one. Next, you want to mimic their slang or the words they're using. Okay, you want to mimic the words that they are using. For instance, say for instance, I'm saying this. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Hey guys, yesterday was so awesome. I was hanging out with my boys and we were like wrestling around and then we had these like laser tag guns and we were shooting everybody. And like, it just felt so amazing. And it was so good to see my kids playing and having fun. Now, real quick, I'm gonna teach you, there are three different, what I call modalities, but there's three different ways people interpret information or see information or think about information. They're either visual, they're auditory, or they use feeling. All right, these three things. Visual, it's not that you're one or the other. We all can use visual, we all can use auditory, we all can use feeling, but usually a person would choose one of these three. And you can tell this based on the words they're saying. So if I say, hey, Carlos, yep, I hear you, man. I hear everything you're saying. Am I'm auditory, visual, or feeling? What do you think? Thumbs up if you think I'm auditory. Yes, auditory. Now, if I say, oh, Holden, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I can see. I see exactly what you're saying. What is this person? Visual? Auditory? They're visual. Or the person's like, I just feel like so unheard. I just, I just always feel this way. That's feeling. So you want to use feeling. So when I'm saying mimicking, you want to mimic their language. So if I'm saying, yeah, man, I see what you're saying. Man, it's, you know, and I'm using visual language. Guess what? You mimic that visual language. Cool. Are you getting this? Raise your hand if you're getting this. All right. So we have a question. I get what you're saying about mimicking, but how do you do it without seeming like the type of person that changes when they're around different people? Woo. That's a great question. Where's Ari? Give me high five. Ari. All right. Here we go. Changing when you're around different people. We don't want to do that. Right. So the question then becomes, how do you know if you're changing or how do you know if, if you're changing around different people? How do you know? Is it based on the words? Is it based on the movement? Is it based on, you know, what you're doing with your face? Or is it deeper than that? Okay, so this idea of changing and becoming a different person has to do with who you are as a person. It's going deeper than that. Now, as far as someone judging you, remember, we talked about this. You can never know what people think in their head. Never. So if someone is judging you, that's their issue, not your issue. The only way you can feel that you're changing around other people is if you're actually changing around other people. So in other words, if you're around your friends or say it's Easter, so you're at your church group and you're just like, oh yes, you know, this is a wonderful service. I just love everyone. I'm happy. I love everyone. But then when you get your friends, you're like, oh man, life is terrible. I'm depressed. It's horrible. Are you changing? The only person that know that is you. I can't tell, right? I can't tell at all. You're the only person that knows that. And if you're choosing to do that, that's one thing, but that's not what I'm suggesting as far as getting people to like you. Does that make sense? Just so we're not getting confused here. I want you to mimic, but I don't want you to become, okay? Mimicking and becoming are two different things. So if there's this person, you know, this crowd, and they're like, oh, we're the cool kids, we're vaping, and we're doing all these things. I'm saying if you want them to like you, you can mimic them without vaping. You can mimic them without thinking that the world is terrible and it's horrible. And I'm not trying to say everybody who vapes thinks that way, but I'm just giving you an example. All right. Does that makes sense. That makes sense. Ari. So you can mimic without becoming, you're going to be who you want to be, but you can mimic them. Now she brings up a good point. If someone is complaining all the time, raise your hand if you know a complainer who just complains about everything, man. So that is not the way to get people to like you is complaining a bunch, just so you know that. But if you want the person who's complaining to like you, what can you do? Do you complain with them? No. You can mimic them without complaining with them. So this is how you mimic them. Man, I hate school. The teacher, she's terrible. I don't even see how I should have a job. Like, that's why I don't understand this stuff. It's terrible. This is what you could do so that you could be likable. Yeah, so I hear that you're saying that school is terrible and it makes it difficult. That makes sense. See, that's simple. That simple statement makes this person feel good. It makes them feel like you're hearing them, Okay. Now, what you generally do not want to do is go opposite of someone, all right? Remember, we're mimicking. So I'm going here, you go here with me. We go here, we go here. Let's do a quick practice, all right? I want you guys to mimic me. 
Your job is to mimic me so that we could be in rapport with one another, okay? So let's see here. I'm going to tell you really quickly about one thing that I discussed yesterday with these guidance counts. And no one is mimicking me. All right. I see Deja is mimicking me. No one else. Ali was mimicking. So remember, you have to copy the person. You don't want to be extra like obvious, but you want to copy. All right, here we go. So back to what I was telling you guys. So write this out. So number one is smiling, smile while you're talking, and then you're mimicking the person. You mimic the body movements, the facial expressions. There we go, Jody. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about, Jody. Immediately, it made me feel good. All right. So I like Jody already. So if you guys, if you want me to like you, I mean, I'm gonna like you anyway, but just say, for instance, I'm a peer and you like, hey, I want you to like me. After you see me interact with people, then you know when you approach me, you don't wanna come like, hey, RJ, how's it going? Right? I mean, me being a nice person, I'm still probably gonna be cool with you, but if you really wanna connect with me, you wanna come like, hey, RJ, what's up, man? You know, you wanna bring some energy, right? That's what I connect with. So mimic the person, body movements, facial expressions. And then we talked about, Ari brought up something very, very big is, Mimicking, but not becoming. You don't want to become the person, but you can mimic them. And if they're talking about complaining, you don't need to complain with them. You don't have to be like, yeah, man, that teacher's terrible. Now we're friends. No, all you want to do is what we call validate. It's a very simple thing. You literally take what they said and say, it makes sense. That's it. It makes sense that you feel that way. Oh, okay. So you're saying that she's mean to all the students in her class. Okay. That makes sense. You feel that way. I see why you don't like the class. You know, you're saying she's mean to all the students. I see why you don't like the class. That's not complaining, but yet I am connecting with you, right? Now, if I told you this, well, no, man, she's a great teacher. What are you talking about? Are we connecting with each other? Not at all. Because you know why? Naturally, people become defensive, all right? Naturally. So when I'm coaching someone, I'm telling you my coaching techniques, when I'm coaching someone, I never go against what they're telling me. They could come to me and say, RJ, the reason why I hate life right now is because my parents are so mean to me. They take my phone away. They never listen to what I have to say. I know my sibling is a favorite. And I'm just sitting there and say, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense why you're not happy with your family. It makes total sense. That's it. That's all I'm saying. I could say, come on now, you need to use reframing. You're looking at it completely a different way. Could it be possible that your parents are stressed? Could it be possible that they do love you? And I could come up with all these things, but I don't do that. Because naturally, people are defensive. If they say something and you say something directly in conflict, they're going to defend it. And they're not listening to what you say. But if you want to connect with someone, you want to build rapport with someone, you are more agreeable. You're like, oh, that makes sense. I'm not saying that you agree that the teacher's terrible. You're saying it makes sense that you feel that way. Because think about it. Can a person feel the way they feel? Yes, absolutely. I don't agree with how Nathan feels or Lizzie feels, but do I respect that they have a feeling about something? Yes. So if I want to be in communication or core with Lizzie, she's telling me like, oh, everything's terrible. I'm going to say, it makes sense. I understand. All right. So you guys are getting these. I'm going to share another tip with you. All right. So if you want people to like you, remember, we do not want to go against them. We want to mimic them. So the next thing you want to do is you want to use language that is positive. Use positive language. I'm explaining what this means. Certain language is more aggressive than other language. So for instance, but when you say the word, but it is not an agreeable part of language because ultimately it literally negates everything you just said. Hey, Walter, man, you're a cool guy, but I want to say, okay. I mean, literally I'm just like, Walter's already prepared. He's like, okay, here we go. We're not in communication. We're not in rapport with each other. I'm going to say, but man, RJ has the coolest name, but so you want to remove that from your language. If you're trying to get someone to like you, another term you want to remove from your language is why. Okay. Why don't really ask why say words like how come man, I'm not talking to my friend anymore. Why? Why? This is all in the subconscious, right? So I'm teaching you guys is in the subconscious. In other words, Matthew and I could be best friends. And I can say why, and we're going to still be friends, right? We could be still be friends. But in his subconscious, it's going to be like, if you're looking at like movement, like water, and it's flowing really nice and peacefully, and his brain is going to be jagged, all right? Something is going to like cross in his brain. I'd be like, why? It's better to be like, oh man, how come? That's just better language. Is that making sense? All right, here we go. 
Ali says, shouldn't people like you for who you are already and how naturally you act? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking me this question. So remember how we started off this conversation today, how to get people to like you. Now, remember when I say like you, like you is like the beginning stages. Could you mimic someone and treat them like trash and then you guys will not be friends? Absolutely, that can happen, right? So when I'm saying I'm getting people to like you, this is the beginning stages. There's more to a relationship than mimicking. So this is a strategy to get people to start to get to know who you are, okay? That's all this is. It's a strategy. When I say likability, it's just so people would want to come up to Chesney and say, you know what? Chesney is actually kind of cool. When I talk to her, it makes me feel good. Remember, this is in the subconscious. No one's actually saying these words, but it makes me feel good. So I want to get to know Chesney more. And then they get to know the real Chesney. They get to know like who Chesney really is. Because think about it. Even if you did not use any of these strategies, can somebody truly get to know the real you in the first conversation? No, it takes time. I mean, there's things that you probably wouldn't even share right away. In fact, I recommend you don't share everything when you first meet someone. So these strategies I'm teaching you is just how to be likable, how to get people to want to talk to you and how to get to know you. How do you get someone to drop a mean nickname they have for you? All right, so a couple of things. So how do you get a person to stop using a nickname? I was going to say this a couple of things. My view on life is that people are generally good. Okay, that's just my view. It's my belief. And we do a whole training on beliefs, but I believe people are truly good. And I believe people are truly caring and loving. Now, I also believe that hurt people hurt other people. That's just my general beliefs. So I would say, number one, first find out or try to discover if they're calling you this name because they're trying to hurt you or they're calling you this name because they think it's funny and they're just trying to be cool with you. You know, how sometimes, you know, we do this with my friends all the time. You know, like we're nice guys, but we always give each other a hard time. We're always talking about each other, but it's all like fun and jokes. So first thing you figure out is like, hey, are they trying to hurt me or they're just trying to have fun? Because these are two different ways to handle this situation, okay? So first ask yourself that question. Now, if you say, hey, they're trying to hurt me. I know they're trying to hurt me. My advice is to go to the person who's trying to hurt you and figure out why they're trying to hurt you. Remember, hurt people hurt people. They're trying to hurt me. Now, I'm gonna give you another life tip really quickly, very quick life tip. So write it down if you need it. If there's a group of people bullying you or being mean to you or whatever, it's better to go to them individually than address the crowd. It's a human thing, man, it's human nature. Whenever there's a crowd, people wanna be tough, and their egos and all this stuff. If you can go to someone directly one-on-one, what you're going to discover is that generally speaking, people are actually good people. So I'm going to recommend that. I'm going to recommend that you go to the one person, whoever you want to go to, find them one-on-one and just talk to them. So one person said they're not trying to hurt me. Okay, I'm going to address that one. But the person who said they're trying to hurt you and find out why they're trying to hurt you. And just remember, hurt people hurt other people. Do they think you did something to them? Maybe they're jealous of you. I mean, you just never know why they're trying to hurt you. So find out, and honestly, it could be you think they're trying to hurt you, and then you go to them and be like, oh, I didn't even really know it was that big of a deal. You try that first. But you know, you can always go number two. Number two is you can always ignore it. We all been called names before. I've been called names when I was a kid. I remember I was super skinny, and he used to laugh at me because I had little legs and I was tall. Hey, we all get names called as. You can always ignore it. But me, I'm usually the person that tries to take action towards a goal. So if my goal is to get somebody to stop making fun of me, I'm going to do something to try to get them to stop. And I'm not talking about fighting or anything like that. I'm saying like I would go approach them and try to talk to them. Now, there's so many strategies I can share with you of how to like communicate in a way where people can connect. But you could use some of these things I'm sharing with you now. Mimic them. You know, if they're like, you know, really loud and they're like, oh, poop face or whatever they want to call you. when you go to them the same way. Hey, man, I noticed you call me poop face. First of all, where did you even get that name from? Come on now. Like, what did you even get the name from? So you want to kind of mimic them and then they'll be able to talk to you. All right. Now, let's say, for instance, they're not trying to hurt you. You do the same thing. You go to them and say, hey, man, I know it's super funny. It's a really clever name, but I'm trying to be tough, right? We're all trying to be tough, but it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts, man, when you say it. Most likely they may be like, hey, I didn't even know that it hurt your feelings. I'll try not to say it. And that's how you handle that. You know, these names, they come at you, man. So uh, this person says, Hey, my friends will ask me why I'm copying them. So what do I do? I'm going to tell you exactly what you do. If someone calls you out for copying them, that means you're doing it too strong. Okay. So this is not like a robot. 
I don't mean like the copy, like if I do this, you do that, and then here and here and here and here. Like you don't want to copy everything. You just want to kind of be like in flow with me. Remember, I'll think like it's a dance, right? And I'm gonna tell you this cool thing that they did. So they did a study to prove this. Like this is deeper than what you think. This mimicking goes way deeper than what you think. And I'm gonna tell you about this test they did. There's this study. They had two people sit back to back. So they're sitting in chairs, okay? Two people sitting back to back. And the test was for each other to say words against what the other person is saying. Purposely try not to be coordinated with them. So that's what they study they did. So when they say, hey, I like red, you say, hey, red is ugly, I like blue. Oh, I like going outside in the summer, but oh, I hate the sun, it's too hot, I prefer to be in the snow. When they did these things, naturally they stopped mimicking each other. Remember, they can't see each other. So one would be like this, man, I hate the summer. The other person would be like this, Oh, I love the summer. They would literally be moving apart from each other, not copying. But guess what happened after that? They said, hey, agree with the person. Be amicable. Hey, man, you know, my favorite sport is basketball. Man, I love basketball. Oh, I love the color red. Oh, red is my favorite color. And naturally, they started mimicking each other. And they couldn't even see each other. This is pretty cool, man. What I'm sharing with you guys is that it goes deeper than what you think. Remember, I shared with you, I think that life is much, much deeper than just what you like us seeing each other. There is something that is called energy. Energy flows. It connects. It's real. It's like we're all connected in some ways. So that's the only way someone cannot see and we could be perfectly in tune. It's no difference than why do you naturally like something? You just naturally like it. For example, you see somebody and it's like love at first sight. Who's had that experience when you first saw somebody like love at first sight? Who's, who's that experience? <laughs> you guys are scared to raise your hand. So how is that possible? You don't really know the person, right? How do you be so much into them, right? How do you become so passionate about something? In the chat, tell me right now, what are you guys' passion? Quickly, fast as you can go. First thing that comes to mind, what is the thing you're most passionate about? Quickly. Games, art, YouTube, cheerleading, skateboard, basketball, food, money. Sports medicine, drawing, music. So like, what is passion? Like, what do you think that is? Passion brings energy. So what I'm sharing with you is deeper than what you guys can see. Is that making sense? So I want you guys to ask me questions about this mimicking thing because I really want you to leave this call today. And I really want you to go practice. I want you to go talk to your brother, your mama, your dad, your best friend, and you just practice it. Just practice mimicking them and just see how things change. See if they smile more at you or see if you guys are not arguing as much. If it's your family, you can actually ask them, all right? So, hey, mom, I'm gonna talk to you. I wanna have a conversation with you. Can you tell me everything you know about fitness? You know, I'm, I really think I wanna kind of follow fitness. What do you know about fitness? All right, and, oh, well, I, you know, this, it could be anything, yoga, it could be food, cooking, anything you know your parents are into, you get them talking, all right? You get them talking. And then I want you to mimic them. And I want you to say, hey, mom, what do you think about that conversation? And just see what they say. Cool. So any other questions? Let's see. How far into knowing someone do you stop mimicking them? Oh, that's a great question. So I'm going to tell you this. That's a wonderful question. This mimicking, remember, is not manipulation. I wanted to kind of share that with you. We're not manipulating someone. We're mimicking them. In other words, we are opening the door for a future connection. I can slam the door and go against what you're saying, or I can open the door. Mimicking someone is literally just opening the door and say, hey, who knows where this goes? I'm just opening the door. I'm not manipulating you. I'm just opening the door. I'm opening it to see what can come out of this. So to answer your question, mimicking is something you're going to just practice. You're gonna, I want you to get in the habit of mimicking everyone. Just be in the habit of it. I mean, this is what I do for a living. This is how you become likable. That's how people like you. When you mimic them, you're opening the door. So I don't think it should ever stop. Now, if you do this often, then you won't have to try as hard, right? Like right now you're trying like, okay, 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 I'm doing it, I'm doing it. But after a while, it's going to come natural, especially when you're in close relationship with somebody. It comes natural. All right, here we go. With eye contact, is it okay to take turns? Because I look at them and they look away when they talk. And then when I talk, I look away, they look at me. I'm actually genuinely curious. Could you answer this? So it's actually a great question. So he's asking, can you take turns? Because whenever he's like looking at them, they look away. And it actually is pretty natural, right? Like I think if you look at most humans, they say make good eye contact. But they don't tell you to stare because staring makes people feel uncomfortable, like everything they're saying, right? So it's actually natural to kind of like look away when you're talking and all that. It's very natural to do that. So yes, you can definitely mimic that. You can definitely take turns on that for sure. 
So what if they have a completely different culture of something? Okay, I'm gonna tell you this, and I hope not to offend anyone when I'm saying this, because I don't mean it to be offensive, it's just, it's mimicking, okay? So I'm an orthodontist. In orthodontics or dentistry, there are Indians. And some traditional Indians do what I call like a head bob. Like when they talk, they do like a little head bob. So my experiment was to mimic that and see like if it's offensive, because I don't want to be offensive. So I did it. I did it. And, you know, one of them I was actually close with. And I asked him, hey, man, you know, this is what I was trying. It's offensive. Absolutely not. Actually, you connect with them. You connect with them. And it's natural. Anything. Like for me, you can like, you know, I use my hands all the time and I talk constantly. If somebody came to me doing this, I would not think they're trying to mimic me, make fun of me, I should say. It happens in the subconscious. I won't even know they're doing it. All I would do is be like, man, this person is cool. Like, who is this man? I want to be their friend. That's natural what happens, right? So it's just mimicking. Now, there is something that says opposites attract. All that's yes, but remember, that's deeper, deeper, deeper. We're just opening the door. That's how you open the door. That's all we're doing. So remember, we are mimicking them, but we're not becoming them. So we can have completely different personalities, but I can still mimic your facial expressions. I can mimic your hand gestures. I can mimic your posture. If you're leaning back, talking to me relaxed, I'm going to do the same thing when I'm talking with you. But if you're engaged, leaning forward, I'm going to lean forward too. Does that make sense? You want to try to mimic as much about them. You can mimic the speed in which they talk. You can mimic how slow they talk. Generally, people who feel the most, they talk slower. They're processing with feelings. They have a slower talk. It's because they're processing. Visual people can talk fast. Auditory people generally turn to the right or to the left because they're trying to hear you, all right? So if you ever see somebody talking to you and they kind of lean to one side, they're generally auditory. And they're super so like, yeah, you know, Carson, you know, I really had a, a great time hanging out with you today. They're more feeling. They're just their person, you know, just the way they're wired. Remember, it's a tendency. They don't have to be that way. They can change. It's a tendency. Now, if you have a friend that has something they can't control, so say, for instance, like, you know, I meet somebody and they have Parkinson's or something, they shake it. I don't want to do that. So we definitely don't want to, like, offend someone. So put it this way. I'm going to give you a general rule. When in doubt, don't do it. If you're questioning, like, ooh, I don't want to offend them, just don't do it. Because you know why? There's so many other things you can mimic. You can, if they're smiling, you can smile. If they look away, you can look away. If they lean forward, you can lean forward. If they do this, guess what? You can do this, too. You know, you can do the same thing. And I noticed as I'm talking, you guys forgot to mimic me because I use my hands a lot. I mean, I do this sometimes and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. You know, that's mimicking. Last thing I'm going to leave you with. This will instantly make you likable. Okay. I saved the best for last because I wanted to make sure all the people who are hanging out with me for a long time. See, the people who leave early, they get to miss the good stuff. So I'm going to leave you with the best stuff right here. The best thing that you can do to help people to like you is when you're having a conversation, make the conversation about them. I'm not saying compliment them constantly. I'm saying make it about them. So when they're talking, you're paraphrasing what they're saying. So, hey, guys, I had a really amazing conversation on Friday with guidance counselors. We made so much progress. You know, we talked a lot about what life coach can do and how we can help. It was an amazing conversation. That's awesome, RJ. So it sounds like that, you know, you really got a chance to connect with guidance counselors and now they're learning about life coaching. Yeah, they're learning about it. Interesting. So like, what are some of the things that they didn't know about life coaching? Oh my gosh, it was so much. And you can get me talking for hours. That is your job. Make the conversation about them. So all you're doing is taking something of what they just said and ask a question about it. All right, remember, this is not manipulation. I'm just helping you to become more likable. Whatever they just said, you take what they said, paraphrase it. Don't like copy like verbatim what they said. Just basically summarize it and ask a question about it. Thumbs up if that makes sense. All you're doing is asking a question because guess what you're doing? You're getting them to talk more. And I'm going to tell you something about human nature. People, people, people love, love, love talking about themselves. Everyone. You can't help it. You know, but I, I can get each one of you. If I was talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, I can have you guys talking for hours just ask you questions about yourself. And the minute I find something that you're passionate about, oh man, I can get you hooked. I can hook you. And the way I know if you're passionate is by your facial expressions, 
Okay, I can tell. If you're like, oh yeah, school's boring. Hey man, did you play Grand Theft Auto? Oh, Grand Theft Auto, I can just see your facial expression and I know, okay, that is how I can hook you. I just start asking you questions about Grand Theft Auto. Even if I already know the answers. Man, tell me about it. I played it like once or twice, but like, what's the premise of it? Oh man, you do this, you do this. Like you can talk about it. So that is what your job is. If you're like in a group and you're like, man, I don't want to be the center of attention, but you want people to like you, Start asking them questions about themselves. Listen to what they say, summarize it, and ask a question. And you want to use the questions how, what. You try to avoid why as much. Why seems too, like, aggressive. You know, how come or something. You can use that. All right, is that making sense? So if you got something out of this that was very helpful, give me a high five. Even if it's one thing. Oh, man, today was success. Oh, that's what I like to see. I like to see the smiles. Jody's smiling. I love to see that. Lauren is smiling. Deja is smiling. Jackson is smiling. Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Ali's smiling. All right, man. Uh, Zach, I see you, Alex. All right. All right. So your job today is I gave you like five or six things. Take it one step at a time. Pick one thing and practice on it. All right. Just take one for day for today. Just practice one. Either just go straight up smile mode today. That's all I'm gonna do. For the rest of the day, I'm gonna smile constantly. That's going to be you know, what you're going to do. Maybe you're like, hey, I'm going to try the mimicking. Remember, one step at a time. Don't mimic everything. You got to practice. You got to practice at this. So first, I'm going to just mimic the facial expressions. All right? Whenever they like look surprised, I'm going to look surprised. Like, oh, or maybe I'm going to try the whole like asking questions about themselves. I'm going to take what they just said. I'm going to summarize it and then ask them a question about it. Maybe I try that. Maybe I'm going to try talking and smiling when I'm talking. Maybe I try that. Maybe I just try it. I want you guys to at least take one thing and try it and see if you notice a difference. If you keep this up, it's going to help you to be more likable. So I hope that helps. It was great talking to you guys. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next week. I hope you enjoy listening to the group coaching session. And I also hope that you are able to learn something that would help strengthen the relationship between you and your teenager. Until next time, This is a teen's perspective, helping parents see the future.